D9500, linear rails, y-axis, stay tuned. So today we're gonna to put these linear rails on the y-axis of the Monster D9500. And one thing you'll notice about this already is I have a double shuttle linear rail here. This is a 700 millimeter linear rail. I think it will go on the y-axis of the D9 without cutting it, but if we need to cut it, uh, we'll get around to that. These carriage plates right here, I downloaded from Thingiverse so you can check that out the link will be down in the description i did not make these myself they printed okay i printed them on the prusa they're at petg with high infill and four or five perimeters so i'm hoping that they're pretty stiff pretty rigid and will work pretty good for me i've already gone through these linear rail carriages and replaced the bearings i get some uh increased quality bearings from Amazon, they're chromium steel, 330 seconds, uh, 32 bearings per side on these. If you wanna know more about that, check out the video up here. I just did a video on how to do this. It was a pretty long video, and to keep this video from getting any longer than it needs to be, um, I'm just gonna link to that. But I have gone through and replaced the bearings in all four of these carriages, and I'm ready to put them on the machine, tear the machine down. So let's get to it. So as I raised my Z axis up to get it out of the way, clear up here to the top of the machine, I noticed something very interesting. I noticed that the Z gantry is at a completely different angle than my print head. So you'll notice that my print head right here is actually sloped a little bit. And I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but this is actually quite sloped in comparison to the actual plane of the Z gantry itself. And I wondered if this was off from my linear rail install last month. So I found my little straight edge here and I put it against the actual 2020 extrusion here. And I can see that the actual extrusion is not mounted straight. So I don't know if you can see that, but maybe there's a little bit better uh, visual zoom out just a touch. If you notice with my straight edge, you can notice how crooked uh, this whole situation here is with this, with this X bar is not even parallel to the the Z gantry itself. And I don't know exactly what that would cause, but you can see actually in the background here, my print head seems to be fairly straight in X. It's just, this should be more parallel to the Z gantry, I think. So I don't know, when I actually replace these wheels in this whole setup here with my Z axis linear rails, I'm gonna take a serious look at focus on making sure this is all straight and everything is is parallel where it's supposed to be parallel and uh, perpendicular where it's supposed to be perpendicular. So hopefully, I don't know, that has anything to do with what we're doing today. I just thought it was interesting that as I raised that up, I noticed how crooked my print head was. This whole X setup is actually crooked from the factory. I haven't actually removed this extrusion ever, so uh, I'm not super happy about that. Anyways, on with the breakdown. As you can probably see my thermistor just pulled off the bed out of the Kapton tape so I'm gonna have to put that back make sure I get that back in there when I'm done I don't really want to undo the cable because I have to get clear into the box to do that and flipping this up is not really what I want to do with it at this time so
Wow, this one is not well made. Not at all. So I'm not really going to take this off of there. I've got this pretty sweet belt tension on it just the way I want and I think I can get this uh, linear rail installed underneath here but what I need to do is I need to um, put the linear rail on there and decide what depth my screws, my mounting screws are going to be before I go much further. So there it is, and it's an M3 screw, so there's a longer M3 screw, and it looks like that one is hitting on the bottom, which means it's not going to tighten all the way down. So here's a shorter M3 screw. And I think that one will work. So I'm going to go get some screws and some T-nuts on the back side of this rail. So the screws that I'm using for this are M3 by 8s. I believe those will work. And generally what I do with these linear rails is I don't actually try to put a screw in every single hole. So I go pretty much every other and with the way the D9 20 by 40 extrusion is set up. It has large screws on the ends already that would block these. So I'm actually going to start on the second one in and then I'm going to go every other every other one with these 3 by M8s. M3 by 8s. So let's get these some of these out here. And then I have a whole pack of these T-nuts right here. I'm just going to go ahead and install them every other, every other. So there I've got both linear rails with screw every other hole except here on the end where I wanted to uh, didn't match up exactly numerically so I just doubled up there and then time to go put them on the machine. So the trick with working these is to make sure that all of your T-nuts will kind of go in the slot and they do kind of fall in the slot on their own pretty easily but I like to just start with them um, lined up at least close to properly and then you want to set it straight down So we'll set that in there, even it out on both sides. Make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to tighten up a couple of these. Because one thing I'm going to want to do when I get the carriage plate back on is make sure that they're parallel front to back. I also need to make sure what I'm checking for here is that my T-nut has turned sideways in the channel which is kind of hard on your first couple because they've got to line up perfectly. See now I've got this tight and that's not locked down so 
I think maybe my rail's not perfectly centered for the T-nut to do its twisting sideways action. There we go. So I've got one. Now let's try this one. That time that one caught first try as well. And now before I crank any of those others down, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the carriage plate on these carriages. Now these require their own M3 nuts and the way this these plastic blocks were designed they require nuts underneath which are the two in the center are embedded but the four on the outside you'll have to hold in from underneath. <clears throat> so I'm going to try this with an M3 by 12 screw but I don't know if that's going to be long enough so to tell you the truth my holes are not lining up here so I'm going to remove these rails and try again maybe they're in the wrong position or I've got the wrong rail on the wrong side before I do that I think maybe I could just run these carriages off the end of the rail and turn it around let's try that See if that gets me lined up any better. No, it does not. Well, let's try the rail on the other groove in the 4020. 2040 extrusion now we'll try that Let's see if I can get the rail held down a little bit that doesn't seem to line us up either Well, I tried to borrow these off Thingiverse. It said they were for a Mark II D9500, but I sure can't find a position where they line up properly. Try one more thing. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go redesign my own, take a bunch of measurements, figure it out. Let's move this one on the inside here. Let's see if we can get some Make sure our belt is nice and straight. It looks like this may be close. Well, I think I'm going to have to design my own. So rather than redesign these and reprint these, I think I'm going to loosen up these extrusions and move them where they need to be. Which means the first thing that I need to do, because I'm believing that once I've got this all locked down, these will help me realign this extrusion. However, I have a screw underneath the, the rail, so I will have to Get that out of there. Which means that I will most likely have to pull these rails on and off a couple of times to get everything where it needs to be. Let's get these carriages onto this carriage plate.
So this is not moving very easily and I'm not happy with that. I think I'm gonna take this carriage plate off and flip it up and see if I need to loosen up the, the screws that go through into the linear carriages so that they can properly align a little bit better. The farther I get with loosening stuff and retightening and being careful with everything lining up and everything being in the right place, the smoother that is getting, but it still is not fantastic. Um, I think I might take another look at these too and make sure they're not both parallel, but uh, crooked even at that. So uh, stay tuned, more messing around. So that one actually runs pretty good. This one's super stiff though. I do have another one of these. Cares though, let's see if that makes a difference. I think I just learned something pretty important. Um, I've been rebuilding these with the bearings and putting these end caps on without them being on the rail. And I've noticed that they're kind of stiff, but I am noticing now that if I allow the rail to properly align those end caps, as in I loosen them up on the rail, And then I tighten them back down on the rail. I get much smoother flowing carriages. I still don't like this one. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace that one. Now, when I put this on they are running much much more smoothly one other thing is i'm going to drill these out so they don't twist force the carriages to twist in any weird way so i just drilled all eight of these holes out to be pretty much exactly three millimeters. I got a drill bit that's pretty much exactly three millimeters. And these screws with the threads on them come in at 2.91. So it should give me pretty much a perfect amount of play. Oh, that feels much better with that pre-drilled. I'm still moving pretty good with minimal effort there. Trying to get these tightened down pretty uniformly so it doesn't put any weird twist on my double bearing block here. One of those nuts fell out from underneath and my back is killing me. Much nicer. One final check on the tightness. Just 
just going by feel to give them the same tightness. Moves now with very little resistance. Very little. This one still is needing some help. And the carriage moves, and that carriage moves. Now we're gonna try putting the carriage plate back on. Finally, that took an incredible amount of adjustment and rearranging, and finally it's running pretty smooth. I am going to print myself a spacer, 10 millimeter spacer for this, so that the, the Y-axis belt will still run straight, because now I've got to lift it, and it's running kind of trapezoidal, which I don't really want it to do. It's definitely going to be noisier than the wheeled carriages. But that's all right, it's really super rigid and it's not going anywhere. So I designed and printed this little spacer right here. It's about 10 millimeters thick because that's about how much higher my bed is now, my carriage plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in there. Uh, but I didn't happen to have these five millimeter cap head screws that pretty much match what I had before but these are 16 millimeters long instead of the original ones were about six millimeters long so this should fit right in where it's supposed to and it should give me the proper spacing on the belt So there we go with that. And look underneath there. With that, my belt is able to run perfectly straight. It's not trapezoidal anymore. It seems to be working just fine all the way from this end can't really get to the other end because my heated build plate is still off. I think I would really like to get rid of these springs on the build plate. The Prusa with automatic leveling doesn't have these at all. No springs at all, so I think I can get a more decent setup going without them. But I do happen to have an extra set of these um, 
finger adjustments. So I think I'll put a set of these above here facing down and then a set below kind of facing up and sandwich my carriage plate in between them. That way I can reach underneath there and I can adjust because I think I've had pretty good luck with getting it close before I actually do the auto bed leveling. I've been actually kind of leveling it and getting it close. And then let the auto bed leveling do the fine tuning. So in this case, I'll be able to adjust it up and down and sandwich these kind of against each other to create an auto bed leveling, a dual situation where I can actually hand level and then use the auto bed leveling like the update on the Prusa has been going on with guys online. So they seem to say it makes a big difference. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. I actually bought these for a set of springs that came with it for my Maker Select Plus. And they happen to be the exact same knobs. I only used the spring out of this kit or the four springs that were in this kit. So let's see about getting this thermistor back under this Kapton tape. There we go. And let's then line this bed up. The last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that my new setup hits the limit switch, which right now it does not. It should hit it about right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off of here and put it on top and it should hit it just fine. So let's see what we get. It seems to hit it just fine. I might have to adjust it later. I don't know if this nozzle is going to print off the edge there or if it's in the right place or what. But it does hit it just fine. Now I have two leveling procedures that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a good old fashioned hand leveling to get this cold as close as I can get it in the four corners. And then I'm going to heat it up and have it do auto bed leveling based on where the bed is after the hand level. So now I've always liked to do this with a feeler gauge that I got out of the kit from Harbor Freight. Um, this is a 0.18 that I use because I'm using a, a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on there. So I give it a little bit more than 0.1. So I get a decent first layer. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to make sure that our Z gantry is level if we can. I don't, I think we may have raised the bed up past the leveling marks that are on the frame. So we'll have to do something else there. So what I'm going to do is use the height of this little machinist ruler. And I'm going to set this 
Z rail right down on it. Right there. And then I'll set this one down on it, which the motor mount doesn't want to allow me to do. And I'm going to call it good right there. And then I'm going to move my print head into position. Well, it took it quite a while to do a manual leveling. But one thing I'm super excited about is notice that my bed does not wiggle side to side, up and down, nothing. It is solid as a rock. So, next step is to heat up the bed, which I'm actually doing with OctoPrint on my phone. Move that print head up out of the way, and we are heating up. It is getting warm. One of the problems with this printer that I believe is a big issue is the center has the heat pad in it and the sides don't have much. And they tried to put some insulation underneath to help with that, but it really makes for a pretty decent bow in the bed when this is hot and this is not. However, if you remember, this is not uh, parallel um, and making this print head not perpendicular to the bed exactly. It's off this way quite a bit. So I don't know what that does for me yet, but I'm hoping to just solve that problem and be done with it soon. One other thing about having linear rails in an environment like this is that um, they tend to get a little bit dusty on top and I'm pretty sure that's not good for them. It's not gonna help them be accurate and consistent so I keep rags around to try to take care of that. Now my bed is, has reached 60, so I am going to go in and have the auto bed leveling procedure run. Check my offset. just till I can barely feel it and then let it do its thing. All right, well, let's lean off the bed and try to get it to print something. I got a benchy in there. It should be able to print just fine. A little bit of IPA on a rag. Pretty sure this benchy prints kind of up front a little bit. So 
So I'll clean off that part of the bed with some IPA. Then a lot of people like to use a little bit of Windex. Get in there with a little bit of that. I'm not big on Windex. I've never really used it much before, but I hear it's pretty good stuff for cleaning the bed. I am, however, pretty big on hairspray, purple can. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hairspray up here in this area. Should dry pretty quick since the bed is warm. I don't like the overspray. I wish this had a removable bed, but being this big, it's difficult to find a company to make one. I'd love to have a spring steel one with PEI on both sides, just like the Prusa would be awesome, but that's a big bed. I'm really hoping I'm to the point now where when I tell it to print, I can just walk away. I don't have to sit here and mess with the Z offset, but I got the Z offset up on the screen ready to go just in case. So when we get up to temperature, we will see. It looks a little bit closer over here than I expected it to be. And out there, it looks like it's a little far away. We'll bring it down. So we get a little bit squish. There, that looks pretty good. And let's see what we get. So here's my result. Benchy printed on D9500 and now has linear rails on X and Y. This is with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, remember, and this Benchy is printed at 150% of normal Benchy size, but I'm pretty happy with it. And you got to remember at this stage, I'm looking at pretty much baby steps and tweaking this get it to work a little bit better and better with each step. But you look how consistent the extrusions are and how even they are across the front. There still is a little bit of wobble there maybe. Um, I don't know, but even with the light shining off of that, it's pretty nice. There's no stringing that I can see. I really haven't touched this up. There's like one string kind of down in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can barely see it myself couple little flyaways like that one right there I haven't even haven't even pulled it this yet but look how consistent that surface is and how consistent these this arch is and these edges right here it's very nice I think now if you remember after the x-axis linear rail but before the y-axis linear rail I printed this Benji so this Benchy, hope that's focusing right. You can see this Benchy doesn't have the kind of consistency that that Benchy had. These extrusions are not directly on top of each other. And there's some kind of funky stuff going on down here. And if you look, and I hope you can see that on the camera, but if you look at this edge right here, you can see that the edge and the arch is fairly inconsistent. It's fairly rough when I scratch my 
pen on there. It's fairly rough. They don't line up well at all. And not a whole lot extra, not a whole lot to talk about as far as flyaways go or any kind of string. There's not a ton of it. You can see this circle on the back here is pretty rough. This whole back area is a little bit funky. If you compare that to the one that I just printed with the linear rails on X and Y, this rear portal is actually quite a bit smoother. Um, maybe side by side there with some dark in the background on both. Okay, not bad. I'm actually, this is actually a pretty good step forward before either of the linear rail upgrades here. The best Benchy I had coming off of that, once again, this is still with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And for some reason, the white filament always has a little bit different characteristics. I'm not exactly sure why that is. If you have any clues or any ideas, just leave me a comment down the bottom. I'd love to hear your ideas on that. But I've got some strings, some flyaways, so this is before pretty much any of my upgrades. This is really just with tuning the printer a little bit better. Because if you remember, and you can see in my, in my other video, which I'll put a card up for, the original print on that printer, uh, this was a Benchy. So it really should look about like this. But uh, right out of the box, no tweaking and default Cura settings. Uh, and that's the Benchy I got out of it. It was a disaster, had to stop it, couldn't let it continue. So, and those are in the video, so check those out. Check those videos out. I'll put a card up for them. Anyways, so basically we're talking about from here to here with upgrades definitely moving forwards definitely making a difference one thing that I really would like to do is focus and maybe I'll focus some more videos on actually getting that 500 millimeter bed to level properly with its inconsistent heating I don't know that it's ever going to work that way but anyways there's the benchy not bad not bad at all. Nice and clean. Decent portal in the back. Pretty smooth for 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I believe this is still at 0.2 layer height. So I didn't jump up to 0.3 layer height, which is fine. So pretty nice. Well, that was quite the project. To tell you the truth, it took a lot longer than I expected it to take. The Y-axis linear rail on the D9, I, I decided to go with two, obviously, because the bed is so big, you really don't have a choice. But I decided to go with two carriages for each linear rail. That may have been a, that may have been a mistake. I don't know, I didn't try it with one. But the two is super stable, it's working great. It did take me almost an entire day to get those on there and I didn't even have to cut them or anything. I mean, they fit perfectly. I probably could have saved myself a little bit of time if I had cut them, but other than that, I really didn't want to have to cut those. They, it seems to work really well. I had to definitely relocate the belt and I had to relocate my 2040 extrusions, which I didn't expect. It took a lot of tuning to get, once the linear rails were even attached and I was starting to put it together, I had to just go back and forth and loosen and retighten and move and wiggle. I learned something really important about the linear rail carriers themselves. Once you get them, you know, cleaned up, swapped out, re-lubed, when you put them back on the linear rail, make sure you loosen them up so that everything can line up properly so that baby can slide back and forth super easy. 
I, I hadn't done that before and with four linear rail carriages and everything tried to lock down, it was just super stiff. And with that bed being so heavy to begin with, I know that motor wouldn't have been able to push it around until they got all locked, all loosened up and aligned and everything. I would have to say that for this project, probably alignment is the biggest issue. And you've got to think about alignment in multiple axes. You have to think about, you know, parallelism. You have to think about torque, twist, yaw. You got to think about everything. And I got, I kind of got away with it, but move it by moving it around, loosening things up, tightening them down, strategically tweaking them a little bit, tighten them down a little bit more, loosen up some other stuff, tighten it down. I just went around and around and around in a circle until that bed moved back and forth pretty easy. And it took hours to get those lined up and running smoothly. Didn't take much time to design and, and install my, my adapter for the belt to get the belt all lined up and everything. That was not a big deal. Didn't take anything on this particular setup to switch my, my Y-axis limit switch over to where it could be used as is, all I had to do was move it from the side of the extrusion up to the top. I did have to tweak that a little bit, move it back and forth, try to get it back to the original location. I'm sure I lost probably about, I don't know, I have to say probably about seven to 10 millimeters in Z height, printable, usable Z space. So, um, I don't know, a 500 millimeter printer, I don't know if that bothers me. I haven't even tried to print anything very tall yet. I've just been tweaking the printer, trying to get it to be able to print tall. Last thing I gotta say is, man, that printer is a monster. If you gotta flip that up, get underneath it, move it around, uh, anything. It weighs a ton. The bed on it is heavy and you gotta control that, make sure it doesn't go sliding crazy when you're tipping it up. It just, it's big. That's why I call it the monster. So that's about it for this episode of Grim 3D. I'd like to say hey to all my new subscribers. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. For everybody else that's just passing through, make sure you subscribe. Leave us a comment if you'd like. Just keep it civil. Smash that like button. Ring that bell. And we'll see you out there.